Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions co-host and moderator. And I'm Erin Palmer, Team Racing Productions co-host and moderator. Joining us is Jonte Lee. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for being here, Jonte. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So first, thank you all for having me. Um, this is a great opportunity and thank you all for affording me this opp opportunity. Well, um, I am John Jonte Lee and that I am a fifth grade teacher for DC Public Schools and that I like to bake, I like to um, travel, that I, I love to um, teach and I just like to read. So that's who I am and what I do. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jonte. Now, as you said that you are a teacher, so what, you know, inspired you to become a teacher and what challenges do you face now as an openly LGBTQ educator? So first, what inspired me to become a teacher was, you know, like when you are small, the everybody plays with action figures and race cars and, and dolls. Well, I played with textbooks and I would create uh, make-believe class. So teaching has something that has always been inside of me. And also I watched a um, movie when I was young with Morgan Freeman, Cicely Ty Tyson, the um, story of Marva Collins and that she was this amazing educator. And that also inspired me to become a teacher. Um, being an openly gay teacher right now is very difficult and that it always has been difficult. Um, it's not that I am ashamed of being gay, but I never talk about it in my classroom. And this is my first year teaching elementary school. Previously, for the past 10 years, I taught high school. And that was something I never talked about was being gay. And because I was afraid it would damage my relationships with the students and with the parents because I never wanted a parent to feel that I am convincing their, their kids and, if, and that if the children um, were to be LGBTQ. And so that was something that I have always been afraid of and very cognizant of is, is that because we, we live in a society now where LGBTQ teachers are being viewed as groomers. Mm -hmm. And so, it's not that I, I I hide who I am, but with the political climate is that it's something that I don't um, bring out in my classroom. And there are moments where I have regretted not doing that. Does being a part of the LGBTQ community impact uh, how you teach or what you teach? Does it make its way into your philosophy or curriculum, even if you're not talking about your personal life and experiences? Yeah, it doesn't make it into the curriculum, but but it does influence how I teach the um, students. For example, if, if I have students that are transgendered, I make sure to treat them equally, mm -hmm. that I make sure to always be aware of their pronouns. And if I ever make a mistake that I quickly say, hey, I am sorry, please help me as that I, I am just learning this too. And so that uh, we form that partnership and to make sure that the classroom is, 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 is very open, safe, and welcoming for, in fact, for all of my students. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sure that for many students, that is something that's, you know, very fulfilling, you know, and very affirming, very fulfilling and very affirming for, you know, an LGBTQ student to, to feel that coming from their teacher. Now, you know, the pandemic affected a lot of people in so many different ways. And there were so many ways that people took advantage of what was happening in the pandemic to do amazing things, to do inspiring things. And, you know, Tell us what inspired you, um, you know, to, to, to use social media during the pandemic and how that experience has impacted your teaching style. Wait, Bo, Bo, before I answer that, can I answer, can, may I tell a story about me being an LGBTQ teacher? Definitely. So that a few years ago, I had a high school student and that um, she told me 
you know what, I love to read and but that my sister won't buy me books. And so that I said, okay, give me a list of books and that you would like and that uh, I would see and that the school could, go, um, get, could, could buy you some of these books because anytime a student that wants to read that we want to and encourage it. And so she gave me a whole bunch of topics and that one of the books was actually this, this one, They Both Die at the End. And so this was a book that was on my book bookshelf. And I'm like, look, you know what? Okay. I'm like, why don't we form a book club and we could read this book together? Well, little did I know that I thought it was that, uh, that this would be a little small thing. No, that 15 students joined the book club. And I was like, okay, cool. And so we're reading the book, just discussing it. And this is an LGBTQ book. And I did not know it. So part of me was freaking out. I was like, whoa, because I really don't talk about this much and and, and because uh, of my fear. But then I just, I'm like, you know what? Let's just push on through. And then uh, they found the article um, that like I did for a news publication where I said, I am a gay teacher. Mm-hmm. And it was like, Mr. Lee, you're gay? And I said, yes. I am gay. I mean, it's already out there, you know, like I'm I'm not gonna lie. And that's when they told 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 me, hey, that we are part of the LGBTQ com- com- community and that as as well. And this made us feel open, safe, and this gave us a safe uh, uh, um safe space. And so it was like a safe haven for for those students. And uh, I learned in that because teachers that that we are always learning is showing up as your authentic self is important. Mm -hmm. And because representation is also important. I wish that I would have had a gay mentor when uh, I was growing up, but I didn't know of any. And that growing up in the deep South and just being alone and with my thoughts, it just was not a good, uh, um, uh, um, good place to be. Oh, yes, definitely. And um, I see that they both that the end actually is, you know, they're creating a TV series on Netflix. Really? About it. Yes. So it should come out sometime in 2024. So I'm sure that would be lovely for your book club members to be yeah. able to watch that. Um, and speaking of Netflix and sitting and watching stuff, a lot of people did that during the pandemic. So tell me about how you used your time in the pandemic um to inspire people so what i did was i turned my kitchen into a chemistry classroom mm. <laughs> and, and the thing is it was at, at first it started out just for my students but then i had students teachers parents logging in all the way from hawaii to boston and they would uh, ask me questions that i would help them with their homework i would tutor and and so by me um, during the pandemic, by me um, being online and teaching science less lessons, is that I was able to come out of the boundaries of the four walls and of and that of my classroom, and I was able to reach many many people. Teachers they were asking me, "Hey, that how do you create a climate that is more inclusive? Like, can you help me with some innovative?" ideas. And and so I was able to partner with teachers and I was able to give advice to parents and I was able to talk to other students. So that was a really great experience. It's so cool to see how you took advantage of a time that was and can continue to be challenging in terms of reaching people and dealing with the technology and I don't know, making, making a new way of connecting that probably reached people that might not have been included otherwise. It's really great. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us, uh, give us a a look in the past. Tell us with what you know now, how you would talk to and advise your five-year-old self. What would you say? Oh my goodness. So (laughs) I would tell my five-year-old self, be who you are. Do not be afraid of who you are. Um, Learn to let go of caring about what what other people think. Just be you and uh, love yourself. And also be patient and be gentle with yourself. 
that's what I would tell my five-year-old self. That's great advice. I think that works for all of us, actually. <laughs> I think that is wonderful, wonderful advice. Now, uh, can you let everyone know how they can follow you, keep up with you, keep up with any updates and, you know, be able to connect with you if they want? So if you want to follow me, that I am on Instagram, Twitter and face, Facebook. Um, my Instagram handle is Jante R. Lee. That's Jante R. Lee. That's my first name, my uh, middle initial and and my last name. Um, that's the same handle for Instagram and Twitter. If you want to find me on Facebook, it's John Tay Lee. Awesome. Awesome. Viewers, please look in the description below for links. And thank you again, John Tay, for chatting with us and telling us about your amazing work with children and a little bit about who you are and how you've connected with them. And thank you all so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. For those watching, please follow Team Racine on social media. And click around our YouTube channel and check out our other interviews, blogs, forums, and more. And while you're there, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But most of all, viewers, thank you for watching. <laughs>